All right, what's going on, guys? It's Eric here. Um, gonna do a quick topic here on resistance for you guys, okay? And knowing when to get out of your trade if you're a bullish trader, um, or finding a good level of support if you're a bearish trader. A lot of you guys asked me about this, so I'm gonna bring this here to you and just kind of base it off of the alerts and trade that we've had throughout the week. Um, you know, it's Wednesday right now, pre markets you know, dead again. <laughs> um, so, you know, not much going on, uh, which is fine. You know, good time to do some research or, you know, get some studying in, practicing in, uh, whatever you might need to do. But I wanted to make this video here before, you know, the market opens and things get a little crazy and I don't have time to actually do it. Um, just to kind of cover a good, you know, recap of what you guys should be looking for, especially on red days to be able to save yourself some headache um, or even just to kind of mitigate your risk when it comes to making your trades uh, throughout the day. So this video won't be too long, but it'll be very uh, just kind of detailed. Um, so you can apply this going forward in your trades and, you know, just give you some better insight. Okay. So I'm also going to touch on the swing alerts because I think it's already Wednesday, half of that is already completed as well, too. So hopefully you guys baked on that one. Um, pretty easy, easy hit there. Uh, the swing trades, you know, they're much, much less riskier than the day trades because, you know, it gives you ample time to sit, plot, study, um, and, you know, wait to take your profits. So without further ado, let's get this bad boy started and we'll just kind of recap everything, okay? All right, so let me first pull up Trading View because I'm gonna use that to kind of go over here with you, with you guys. And of course, they updated their their stuff. Let look at that. He's probably traveling and trading too, guys. <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, let's let's just first start with the swing trade alert. So let me see if I can get that pulled up here. All right, so we have APT and XBIO. Now with APT, I said you know. Ideally, you'd want to get in around 980 through 960 level. You could say 975 if you want to make it, you know, an average. Um, and, you know, look for, you know, one or $2 stop loss there after you enter in. Um, and like I said, ideally, my target would be 1040. Um, and, you know, if the uptrend continues, um, at the time that we sent out this watch list, you know, on the 25th Sunday night to get you ready for Monday morning, um, you know, it was currently at 1025. All right, so we'll take a look at that one there. And by now, it's Wednesday. I'm pretty sure you should have, you know, banked on that one had you, you know, set up the trade properly like it was kind of mentioned here. I mean, these, these swing trades have been pretty much on point since we started implementing them. Um, XBIO hasn't quite, you know, if you if you follow the plan on XBIO, it probably hasn't quite initiated yet. Um, it hasn't gone down that low so far. It's actually been going up, so, you know, Probably if you were paying attention to that, that you know you're probably making out on that too. But if you're following this plan, you probably haven't executed it yet, which is perfectly fine. Um, again, you know, do your due diligence. Obviously, this isn't financial advice or legal advice or tax advice, nothing like that. This is just kind of giving you an idea of what to look for in certain trades throughout the you know throughout the weeks and days. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, APT first. So let me go ahead and close it out, move it out the way. All right, let's pull this up here. Now, of course, guys, again, TradingView, I don't use this to execute my trades or nothing like that. I use it just to kind of chart and review with you guys. Um, it doesn't have all the full, you know, things that I look for, like level two or anything like that set up on it. Um, maybe you can do it on, on TradingView. I don't know. I don't use it. I just use it for charting. It's a great charting platform, um, in my opinion. So if you need that link, I'll actually put that in the video for you to sign up if you you know want to get the full features of it because it's great full feature wise um i'm not even signed in i probably should sign into this thing because i think you can only get a certain amount of indicators because this is this is blank right now usually i have different indicators and in fact let me go ahead and put this on here so we can kind of get a better view of what we need to look at when it comes to executing a swing trade so you guys can get a better idea so of course we're on the one minute chart the one minute chart is what i usually trade on with swing trading, you don't have to be on the one-minute chart. You can actually be on a much larger chart if you want to. But while we wait here, let me go ahead and have these indicators in here. We know my number one I love. 
value weighted average price. Let's get that pulled up on here. I don't like the way that one looks, so I'll adjust that in a second. We've got to have my movement average convergence divergence, the MACD. And I've got to have RSI. Now, I don't adjust these um, settings, nothing in particular. Um, I think with me not being signed in, you can only have three indicators on there. I usually would have the exponential moving average. Yeah, so you need to have, you need to be signed in in order to have uh, more than three indicators, I believe. But 25, you don't really, <laughs> you don't need that many indicators. That's a lot. But um, aside from the MACD, the RSI, and the volume weighted average price guides, I usually have the exponential moving average, and I usually have a moving average um, as well on my charts, just to kind of give me, you know, ideas of what I'm looking at the trade. But anyways, we'll, we can start with these three. This will be perfectly fine. But let me just adjust this volume weighted average price chart. I don't like the way this looks. Let's see. Go ahead and change that settings. I like my VWAP bars to be yellow. This is just out of habit to since like I think um using think or swim for me. I don't need no upper band, I don't need a no lower band. Now if you want to keep your settings like that guys that's perfectly fine. You don't have to do what I'm doing. But um that, some of that stuff is just distracting to me. I just need to know what the what the uh what the value weighted average price is. I don't need to know the bands. I mean other people use it, works great for them, that's fine, but it's up to you. But anyways, let's go back here. We are APT Let's go back to where we sent out the watch list. This is the 20, where is one that that far? 26, which is right here. I don't even see that. So 21st. All right. So pretty much this is where it's been at since the watch list had gone out. This is pre-market on the 26th. Now again, we said you want to enter around 980. 960 range and want to get out around 10 40 just to not be greedy. I mean, it's a good dollar move, one to two dollar move. You know, if you want to do a one or two risk reward, you can. And this play, you know, played out perfectly because if you see here, once the pre market was over and the stock opened up, boom, boom, boom. Let's say you wouldn't have got filled in. Let's say if you were sticking to that plan, right? And you set a buy price at 960. Obviously, Monday opens up. You know, just let it sit there. You know, make it a good to cancel order. Boom. It opens up. You know, it, the stock is rising. It went all the way up to, what, $10. And then it came back and pulled down. You would have got filled in at the 960 level right here, right? Boom. Time goes on. You're not worried about it. Your stop loss is going to be, what did I say, a, maybe about a, a dollar or two from 960. So it, if it drops to like 860 or, you know, 760, then at that point you want to get out. But had you stuck to the plan, let's say you did 100 shares at 980 and you let that thing just, you know, fluctuate, go up and down, go up and down, go up and down. And you set your target price to, you know, get out at 1060, 1160. You you know probably would have got filled well not at 1160 but probably at like the 10 right there and that's just on Monday um, so it pretty much did what it you know was supposed to do um, at that point but again that's had you pre had that's had you have you know placed your buy order at 980 and then not get too greedy and you know get yourself a quick hundred dollar profit by letting it get out at you know 1080 you'd have got a quick hundred bucks in just one day from doing nothing <laughs> doing nothing but setting your risk setting your reward and moving on with your life that easy now why did i you know come up with those numbers if you looked at you know any of the courses that i talk about finding levels of support and resistance and i show you how to find that you should be able to determine that but this comes out you know every week for you guys but that's ideally what you should be doing with the watch list you don't even have to actually set the actual buy order. If you want, you can just set an alert for yourself through your broker to alert you when the price is hitting that target. And then at that point, if you want to actually get in, you can. Um, but it's up to you. But as we know, as we see here, you know, already is Wednesday. And one of the, you know, alerts on the stock, on those 
on the watch list has already, you know, executed perfectly. So there you go. Um, XBIO, we can touch on that here real quick before I go over the other stocks that I wanted to talk about. Uh, what, XPIO, it was at 242. I mean, this thing is just still continuing this little uptrend there. Still, ideally, I'm waiting for it to have more pullback. Um, like I said, I wanted to get in a little bit under $2, but it's not quite reaching there yet. It's holding a good level of support right here at this 242 right now. Um, but hey, that's where we're at. So it still has a good range for you to make some profit there, but we'll still wait on that one. But let's get to the other, you know, things that we want to talk about. So in this video, guys, support and resistance is going to be key. Um, now, obviously, the last two days have been red days. I'm expecting today, today to be a red day as well, too, like I posted in the Facebook group. The thing here on red days, if you're a bullish trader, which a lot of you, especially you new people, really are. Um, you need to be more careful with your trades for a bunch of different reasons. Let me, I don't like how big this is real quick. Sorry about that. I should have, I should have just signed in my chart settings are way better. I think ever since they did this update, they've changed a lot of their chart settings. Um, but anyways, so like I was saying, uh, with the red days, Support and resistance is very, very key if you're a bullish trader. Just like it would be key if you were a bearish trader on uh, a green day. Um, the reason why is because you need to know your limits as a trader and not have yourself be consumed by the greed and end up losing a lot of money, which happens quite a bit. Especially, you know, if you're a bullish trader and you're coming off a high of like a good three-day green streak, and you know you're expecting, you know, to make some more money same way you did the last few days on a red day, it's probably not going to happen. In the course that I go over with you guys, I talk a lot about the trend and I go in detail about the trend. You're a bullish trader and it's a red day. You shouldn't be fighting the trend. Um, you should be more limited and conservative with taking your profits, which means you should be doing it a lot more quicker and set your gains and your stop losses a lot more tighter because obviously the bears are winning and a downtrend is more likely than an uptrend. Now, there are some anomalies where some stocks will, you know, go against the grain, but don't think that's going to be the case for the most part, okay? Um, happens every now and then. It's not impossible, but it's not common. Remember, when it comes to stock trading, guys, you want to have the odds be in your favor. Um, there's no one set rule. You know, for every one thing there is, there's an opposite to it when it comes to the stock market. So understand that. Now there's a good ways to be able to find out, hey, you know, if I'm a bullish trader trading in a red market, how would I understand where my limit is on a stock trade or what should I be looking for to not have myself, you know, lose a lot of money? It's pretty simple. And the main thing is gonna be the resistance level. Okay. So let's talk about how we can find. Let's lose, let's use one of the alerts for an example. Uh, let's do E Y E G. I believe that one was alerted. I know it fell after hours on one of these days, but yeah, E Y E G. Five forty nine had some good news, and I think it carried over into the next day. Yep, because that was the time that it ended. Boom. And it was on the watch list, too. The next day, yeah. So let's take a look at EYEG real quick here, guys. And let me use that one as an example for you. This video might actually go a little bit longer than I thought because I'm going to be going into detail with this. All right. Uh, 1546. Okay. So this is where it all began with EYEG. All right. So... It had its little run Friday. This is Friday. This thing went crazy. Now, obviously, pre-market opened up, and it was at it was at a high. So obviously, it was probably one of the top gainers. Probably had most people eyeing it and looking at it. Usually, by this time, guys, pre-market will you know you can determine 
first and foremost, which is what I tell everybody in the course too, and step one when it comes to trading, you should know what the market sentiment is for the day. Is it red? Is it green? Is it flat? Because that's going to help you determine what you should be expecting out of your trades. We opened up, market was red, pre-market was red, not much volume coming through. That alone is a sign as well too that this is probably going to be a good bearish day. Low volume means that means not a lot of people are looking at it. Um, and that is one major indicator. If you start to see that volume is dying on the trade that you're looking at, which means that there's not a lot of price action, obviously here during the bell opening up, it's going to be a lot of price action because all the traders are rushing to the stock. Then it's going to slowly, slowly die out throughout the day. Unless like some news comes out or some kind of catalyst opens up and, you know, brings more attention to the stock. Nine times out of 10, though, the stock is going to be, you know, making its moves in pre-market. Then come open up usually the first 30 minutes to an hour, two hours at the most. You'll have most of the price action there and then it'll start to die down. And typically, Wherever, whatever side is winning, whether it be bearish or bullish, it's going to pretty much continue that trend throughout the day. Now, obviously, the overall market sentiment and the market sector will also play a factor too as well, but you just need to know that, okay? Um, and that's just something I talked about that you should have in the, in, the, in the course as well too, knowledge of the sector sentiment, the market sentiment. It's been red all day. So even though this was the top gainer of the day, it still was bearish all day. So depending on when you got in, obviously you're not going to get in right here. You're not going to know the stock is doing anything until, you know, till this time frame. I mean, if you didn't know the day before when it was alerted. <laughs> but most other traders who aren't, you know, in the alerts and things like that that are just looking at this or trading pre-market are going to be eyeing the stock and they're just going to be looking to see, you know, entries and exits and they're going to go along with the trend as well too. Okay? Um, but anyways, so... What should you be looking for knowing to limit your risk? When you're looking at the trade and, you know, depending on your strategy, obviously at this point it has, you know, shown that the bears have taken over. And this is just in pre-market. Coming out the gate, you kind of know with like the moving average convergence divergence. And that long volume bar right there is showing you that, hey, this is going to be bearish for quite some time. Now, by the time the moving average convergence divergence rolled over the green and it's showing very little strength and hasn't even broke VWAP, that should let you know, hey, once it rolls over again, it's going to continue to be bearish. Then it's going to, you know, roll over again. If, if, if by the time it rolls over again, it's not showing much of a strength to break anything at this point, you know, you should probably understand, hey, this thing is probably going to continue to stay bearish territory. And at that, you know, whatever point you choose to realize that, hey, this thing is continuing a bearish trend, you need to go ahead and cut your loss. And this is what a lot of traders talk about, cutting your losses quickly. If your plan was to get in and go bullish on this trade, but you see that on the bullish indicator side, whether it be high relative strength index, <clears throat> excuse me, because at this point, if it's already that high on the relative strength index, the moving average convergence divergence is, you know, green at this peak. And it's only gone this high, obviously you know that it's not gonna go any higher. And you need to just go ahead and, you know, accept the fact that the bears are winning on this one. Okay? And go ahead and cut your loss. And if you let's say if you entered in on here thinking it was gonna be some pullback and bounce back up, and by the time you got here, you seen that it's not going nowhere, go ahead and cut your loss. Don't fight against the trend. I'm already in here, guys. God, why are you showing me this? Want me to sign in? Let me sign in real quick. Is that all right? Why do you give me a whole other thing? Oh my god. Anyway, let me just refresh it. And it resets my whole thing. Well, that sucks. But, anyways, um, that's pretty much what, I'm, what I mean by that. Accepting the support and resistance level. Uh, let me see if I should sign in here or not. I probably should, just so that this thing will stop popping up. But yeah, so that's a good example for you guys right there. Um, another one, let me see if I can pull up INTZ. Might be good. Yeah. 
Yeah, this one was a good one. This one was alerted right here. Let me get you those indicators real quick. Should just sign in and stop being lazy. What is it today? So I'm feeling bearish. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this one tier two INTZ. <coughs> now, let's say it's alerted. What are you doing? Hey, this average, you know, blah blah blah. This thing is going up. You wait. Usually, like I tell you guys, sometimes you know, wait for it to pull back, and it pulls back after the moving average convergence divergence has, you know, gone red. Then you want to start to look to enter in as it's starting to roll green and cross the VWAP. Usually, I'm pretty sure when I have my exponential moving average and moving averages up here, it probably cross at this point right here, which is a good sign to get in. So you get in, you get your move take your money and leave had you not and it starts to roll back over and you see that once it's rolled over on the moving average convergence divergence and it's broken the VWAP that's kind of a sign there your first warning sign that this thing might become bearish now by then it's established as some support some support some support and the moving average convergence divergence is rolled over and it's only went this high now you know it's got to roll over again, so it's going to come back down. Now it's coming back down and it broke the VWAP again. That's your second sign that it's not going to show any more strength. Now it's still holding that support, right? Still holding that support. This is a good level of support too. So pretty much from this area to this area, you know that's level of support. Okay, but as it keeps rolling over and rolling over, it's not showing any strength. You know that this thing is dying down. Because the more you go down, the more that the volume is going to light up throughout the day. Uh, and if it's not you know, showing any strength, you might as well just go ahead and, you know, cut your loss at that point. Um, you know, again, you should know that the bears are winning the day. It's been red all day. You're a bullish trader. You should have been conservative with your trade and took your 50 cent to a dollar move or so and then got your money and got out before the before it even rolled over. But even at that point, once it did, if you want to try to hold on and hope, this is how you know that you need to exit the trade if you're the opposite. Now, if you're a bearish trader, these might be good entry points for you. If you see that, oh, the moving average convergence divergence only went up this high, all right, perfect. So I know that this thing is going to continue to go down. So again, it all depends on how you trade. But these are some key signs here, guys. You know, you're putting together, your job is to put together all these indicators that help you determine, you know, the way that you trade. It's just giving you more confirmation. It's not all in all because there's been plenty of times where things will just, you know, go the opposite way. And the indicators are, these are lagging indicators. These are not leading indicators because you also need to be looking at level two, looking at market orders coming in and things like that um, while you're trading. So I, I go over all that stuff. I'm not going to go through that on this you know, little section here. This is just to kind of a recap for you, a brief overview charting wise for you to understand this is what you should be looking at when it comes to doing the trades. Okay. Uh, I'll do one more here real quick. Let's take a look at... Uh, uh, MOXC. I think that one was a crazy one that just felt, yeah, it was, there it is. So, MOXC, if you guys don't know, but let me see if I can pull it up here for you. This thing I think was alerted. This is just off of yesterday. This was alerted pre market that it had went up. Let me see. If I can find the alert of the day. I remember it saying, was it like a high of 20 something? Yeah, right there. High day was 18. And that was pretty much in that area yesterday. 26. So when it was alerted, this thing had rode all the way up here. And I know some of you guys were talking about how you got caught in that. Um, look at 
look at how the thing just fell off the cliff with the relative strength index. It was halted down, and the moving average convergence divergence just rolled over that quickly all at once. There's no way you could anticipate that, which is, again, why it's important on especially bearish days if you're, you know, trading and you're a bull trader for you to take your profits as quickly as you can, you know. So let's say you got in, you know, it show what well, you know a little cup and handle there that's fine you see that pattern you get in you, let's say you get in like right here like oh okay i'm gonna jump in and ride it out i mean this thing broke another dollar level broke another 1850 level you guys gotta remember your key levels of support and key levels of resistance that are not just based on charting but also based on price and i go over that in the course too so once you know that and you take your profits at that point you know you should be fine but had you try to be greedy and stick this out thinking this is going to be a good runner on a bearish day you would have got taken out all the way back down to 14 men that would have been a major hit hopefully you know you took your profits but if not you're not going to know until something like that these candles indicate that this thing is going to stay bearish because it didn't even give you no kind of warning sign at all it just dropped and that can happen more often than you might know especially on days like that now, if you want to hold on and hope try to get some of that back you would have barely made out but at that point you should know too it's not going to go anywhere um but yeah those are just signs guys i mean knowing the, the way the day is knowing the sectors that you're in how the overall market is doing that day will help you determine whether or not you should be trying to be greedy on one side and conservative on the other if it's a bearish day and you're a bull trader, you need to be conservative. If it's a bullish day and you're a bear trader, you need to be conservative. Okay. Um, you should be watching things like price action. You should be looking for key levels of support and resistance. Look at what the stock is telling you, what the indicators are telling you. Put those things together. Are, are there more bearish indicators than bullish indicators of this trade? If so, and you're trading as a bullish trader, you might as well get out. If it's the opposite, same thing get out okay so guys i hope this kind of helps you get some insight on helping you determine whether or not you should be in and out of a stock um you know throughout your trading day okay um this is you know this these same indicators are available if you're like trading mobile webo platform same thing on thinkorswim um i believe mumu as well or any other brokers that you might be using um Obviously, I'll put those brokers in the comment section below, too, uh, if you don't have any of those, so you can kind of get an idea. Or even if you're not using them, you know, it's good to have the brokers and then use their charting to trade on whatever platform you trade. If you're doing it mobile, now, if you're on your computer or anything like that, it's perfectly fine. Use whatever, you know, you want to use. A lot of times in, conjunct in conjunction, I might use, you know, this platform and then, you know, be trading on my Weibo platform. Um, kind of looks pretty much the same thing, except on here I got like, you know, the super trend indicators and things like that, but you can always go through the other videos and know how to do all that. So, you know, got my level two price action here. I'm looking at this while looking at this at the same time. And I got my information here that I need to know. And I'm not going to go through all this. I cover all that in the course, but anyways, too much stuff to go through. But anyways, guys, hopefully this video helps you out. Um, you know, again, bearish day, let's, you know, trade green. And stay green. All right. Talk to you guys later.